He was a former royal court insider in Saudi Arabia and one of the most influential journalists of the Arab world. Jamal Khashoggi described himself as an independent journalist, using his pen for the good of his country. After weeks of toing and froing, Saudi Arabia has finally admitted a 59-year-old was killed at the country's consulate in Istanbul. Let's now cross over to Jamal Khashoggi's editor at The Washington Post, Karen Atia. Karen, thank you so much for uh, speaking to us here on Middle East Matters. Of course, looking beyond the headlines, beyond the legacy, Jamal was a father, he was a partner and a friend. Tell us about the Jamal Khashoggi that you knew. Um, Jamal was kind, brilliant, um, an active mind, constantly wanting to write, uh, and just extremely uh, full of love for his country. And I think that's something that came through in our conversations and in his, his writing for the Washington Post. Um, he didn't want to be a dissident or a rebel. He just wanted to write. And uh, I appreciated that passion as, as his editor. And this was a man who we know faced a myriad of personal challenges because of the work that he was doing, his critique of Saudi policies. His ex-wife was reportedly pressured into divorcing him. The kingdom imposed travel bans on his children. And the list really does go on, doesn't it? Yeah, it's true. Um, in our messages, he was most upset about uh, the travel bans on his children um, that were imposed shortly after he began writing for us. He uh, told me that the Saudi authorities were upset that he was writing for the Washington Post. But uh, I think, you know, there were attempts to try to uh, lure him uh, back to the kingdom and convince him that he would uh, be better off you know, in the kingdom, which he rejected and, and, and decided to stay here instead. And Karen, you and your colleagues at the Post are at the helm of this Maybe we can call it a relentless campaign, pushing for answers in an ideal world. What steps uh, would you like to see the United States take here? Um, in an ideal world, uh, we'd like to see for the United States, uh, first of all, reject uh, the so-called explanations that the Saudis have been given. Um, in an ideal world, it's to uh, push for, uh, for the Saudis to come clean and to threaten serious consequences for murdering a Washington Post journalist in um, in a consulate. It could be sanctions. It could be the imposition of an arms sale uh, cancellations. But there need to be serious consequences for if found uh, that this goes all the way to the top to Mohammed um, bin Salman, the crown prince. Beyond that, would you agree that at this point it's imperative that the international community doesn't let the Saudis get away with this, when the fate of many other dissidents who are in Jamal's shoes could also be at risk? Absolutely. I've been hearing from Saudis who are scared, who are frightened for their lives, that if Jamal could be murdered in this way and everyone uh, you know, tries to continue business as normal, um, then what about them, you know? And I think it's it's not just Jamal's murder. It's it's also looking at Saudi Arabia with the war in Yemen, uh, the kidnapping of a Lebanese prime minister, cutting off diplomatic relations with Canada. It's looking at what sort of Saudi Arabia uh, uh, is uh, is happening under Mohammed bin Salman. And that's a big question here. Does it sadden you, disappoint you that it took the death of a colleague, a revered journalist, a friend for some of these questionable Saudi uh, policies to be put under the microscope? Absolutely. I, I think the fact that, you know, we continued business as normal when a prime minister was reportedly kidnapped, uh, that Saudi Arabia breaking diplomatic ties with Canada. I think what's happening in this story is that people are resonating personally with the story of just a man who wanted to get married and who walked into a deadly trap, um, basically. Um, you know, but at the same time, it means that his words are more important now than ever. And all that they've done, if they've tried to silence him, they haven't been able to kill his words. And now... Now, those are being read all over the world in multiple languages. So all they've done is just um, made him into a hero of sorts. But if you look at the wider picture uh, and look at the global 
uh, climate. Do you think that it's likely that uh, Saudi Arabia can recover from this? Because, of course, uh, Jamal Khashoggi's case is currently in the headlines, but would that die down and uh, Mohammed bin Salman resume his activities? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's always the risk. However, this seems like a, a different sort of inflection point. I think now I'm hearing from Americans who don't really know that much about the Middle East or Saudi Arabia and who hadn't heard about Jamal's name, who are curious and can't, they tell me they can't get this, this out of their minds. So particularly if this becomes um, an election issue for the midterm elections coming up, um, this is something that I think senators, Congress are, are furious, you know, over this. And so I think um, this only adds fuel to those who have been calling for a fundamental rethink of the U.S.-Saudi relationship. It only gives um, much more uh, ammo to their cause. And so I don't think it can be business as usual with Saudi Arabia from here on out. Karen Atia, Global Opinions Editor at The Washington Post, hoping and thinking it won't be business as usual uh, after this uh, scandal completely unravels. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us here on France 24.